Hello, everyone. It says it's recording, and it says I'm sharing my screen. I'm on the iPad, so I don't do this very well. But I think <laughs> I can do this. All right. All right, so for homework one, there are 17 topics. And the first one we come up with here is to simplify. Now I need to remember I need to remember that we have to you add when you multiply, sorry, you add your exponents. When you divide, you subtract your exponents. When you have a power raised to a power, you multiply your exponents. So that's what we got to remember. So here we have multiplication because we got two parentheses side by side. This parenthesis does not is a power of one. This one has a power of two. So if you remember your order of operations, it's parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division occurring together left to right, and addition and subtraction occurring together left to right. So before we can multiply the two parentheses, these two things together, before we can multiply, we have to take care of the exponents. So I'm just going to write this one back down. Negative 2x squared y and z to the third. And now we're going to take each one of these to that square exponent. So negative 3 squared is going to be a positive 9. x cubed squared, so that's a power raised to a power. We're going to multiply them, so that's x to the 6th. y to the 4th squared, multiply again, that's y to the 8th. y to the z squared, we multiply again, that's z to the 6th. Now, both of these parentheses for the first power, all we have to do now is just multiply negative 2 times 9 is negative 18. x squared times x to the 6th, and now we're doing the multiplication, so we're adding our exponents, so that's x to the 8th. Remember when you don't see an exponent, it is a power of 1, so y to the 1st times y to the 8th is y to the 9th. z cubed times z to the 6th, yep, z to the 9th, you got it. Same thing happens with, uh, you guys can pause the video anytime you need to when I start scrolling up and you need to go back or something. So, all right, so question number two, same idea, only this time we have a fraction, which is all right, we don't mind fractions. Fractions are fantastic. Same thing happens. There's two ways to work this. You can simplify the inside first and then raise it to the power or you can raise everything to the power and then simplify the inside. I tend to like to simplify the inside first. So the first thing I'm going to do is simplify the inside. When I say inside, I mean inside the parentheses. Well, 4 over 8, that simplifies down to 1 half. Now go ahead and put your exponent out there, that 4, so you don't forget it. You have an m to the fourth and an m squared. Remember when you're dividing, you subtract your exponents, numerator minus denominator. Leave the answer in the numerator. That's x squared, because 4 minus 2 is x squared. And there's not any n's in the denominator, so the n cubed stays in the numerator. So now we raise everything to the fourth power. Well, 1 to the fourth power is just 1, so we don't need to write that first 1 down x squared to the fourth, we're again using the multiplication rule, I mean the power to a power rule, I mean to multiply your exponents, x squared to the fourth, 
is x to the eighth. n cubed to the fourth is n to the twelfth. And then two to the fourth is 16. Now the answers are at the bottom of this thing, so you guys can check them and see if I'm right. If I'm not, let me know and explain why in the discussion in Alex's homework area and earn some points. Now there's also another thing to remember, and I'm gonna tell you both of them right now. One is that if you have a base raised to the zero power, that's one. There's a reason for that. You guys can look that up or you can post a question about it in the discussion and we'll talk about it. The other thing is that if you have X to a negative number, that becomes the reciprocal one over X to that number. All right. So when it asks us to evaluate these expressions, this whole parenthesis is raised to that zero power. So the answer is one. Note, however, the parentheses on this one is only attached to the two. So only the two is one. That negative still is out front. So negative one is the answer to that one. So to rewrite the following without an exponent, which means everything can be done mathematically nice. First thing we notice, oops, change colors. First thing we notice is we have a negative exponent, and that is the information over there. The reciprocal. So that's really going to be, and your parentheses go around the whole negative two. So that means the whole negative two is now going to be the denominator raised to the square. Notice how the negative becomes not negative in the denominator. Well, when you square negative two, you get four. So that's one four. Now this combine combines everything we know. And it all depends. It's all multiplication. So it's really all multiplication. But being all multiplication, we just simply multiply our numbers, two times, oh, there's an eight, there's a four. All right, two times eight times four, 64, I think. All right, and now, see, I gotta erase that because I can't, there you go. I use blue on this one. All right, so I got a W to the eighth. I look for another W, here's another W to the ninth. When we multiply, we add exponents, eight plus a negative nine gives us a W of a negative one. Don't worry about the negatives till the end. All right. All right. Now we look at the U's, because that's my next variable. I always work left to right on these things to find my variables. Some people go ahead and scratch out the ones they've already used up. They don't try to use it again, but I've got a W over here, so I'm not gonna mess with W over there. All right, so we got the two u's here. So u to the negative seven times u to the ninth. We add the exponents. That's u to the square, u to the second. Nine, negative seven plus nine, or nine minus seven, however you want to look at that. We got a couple of y's here sitting side by side. Remember that's y to the first when you don't see a power. We add our exponents, so that's y to the seventh. And that is our answer. Basically, that's all that's going on around here. I'm going to do it again. Now, when you have a fraction that has the, recip the uh, reciprocal exponent, you just flip the whole fraction. Now, this reciprocal flip has to do with that outside negative. <clears throat> now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify the inside. So the four just kind of stays there. And I have z to the negative sixth. So if you want to over here in your scratch paper, you get z to the negative six divided by z to the negative two. So that's gonna be negative six minus the negative two, which is negative six plus two. And that's gonna give you a negative four. We've got a z to the negative four. So I simplified the inside. Now I'm gonna take care of the exponent on the outside. I don't worry about negatives till the very end. So four squared, unless it's a negative on a fraction, then I'll go ahead and flip it. Uh, four squared is 16. Z to the negative four squared, multiplying those exponents, that's gonna be a negative eight. 
But then you notice you've got the reciprocal rule here. So that's going to be 16 over z to the eighth. If you got any questions about any of these, post them in the discussion in D2L. Number seven. All right, it's the same idea. Well, now we got fractions. This piece over here, the second set of parentheses is raised to the third power. Go ahead and do that first and get that out of the way. Leave the first set alone. Whoops, let me change colors here. We don't need to mix with the previous one. All right. So we got u squared z to the negative one. So two cubed is going to be eight. Remember x is raised to the first power if you don't see a power, so that's just x cubed. U to the negative four raised to the third is u to the negative twelve. That takes care of the numerator. Denominator z to the negative three raised to the cube is z to the negative nine. Remember we multiply exponents. We raise them to a power. Again, yeah, no, I'm not going to worry about the negatives just yet. Also remember your your fraction rules. This fractions over one. So we can combine the u squared with the u to the negative 12. We add exponents when we multiply. This is multiplication. If you want to, you can actually put everything over here because there's nothing to do with the 8. And then the x cubed stays by itself because there's no x's to play with. So u squared times u to the negative 12. We're subtracting, so that's going to be negative 10. We're adding, with, but 2 plus a negative 12 is subtraction. Yes. And then you get z to the negative 1 in the numerator and a negative 9 in the bottom denominator. So that's really going to be z to the negative 1 over z to the negative 9. That's going to be negative 1 minus the negative 9, which is negative 1 plus 9, which is 8. So it's z to the 8th in the denominator. That over there is a side thing. Then we notice we have a reciprocal there. So that's going to be 8x cubed, cubed over u to the 10th, z to the 8th. I tend to put things in alphabetical order, not always, but a lot of times I do. All right. Square roots, hopefully you remember those. Those are your doubles in multiplication. 1 times 1 makes 1, 2 times 2 makes 4, 3 times 3 makes 9. 4 times 4 makes 16, 5 times 5 makes 25, etc. So basically, you're just looking for, you can separate these as the square root of 100 over the square root of 81. That's a rule. And that's just 10, right? 10 times 10 gives you 100. And you have to think in your head, what times what gives you 81? You have to go through your doubles till you get there. 6 times 6 is 36, 7 times 7 is 7, 49, etc. Till you get to 9 times 9 is 81. And that's our answer. Forgot to change colors. That problem was over there. All right. So we want to evaluate the following. Negatives are inside. Parenthesis. Oh, I hate these. I gotta look at the answer. Uh, number nine. I get confused every time I see those. Oh, where's number nine? There it is. Okay, because the even's in there, that's why I think. Yep, the even comes out. I get there. Okay, because this is even, you have the square root of positive three. Which is, remember, a square root is a little two out here. You could have two divided by four. And that's the square root of. I don't know what is that. <laughs> it's nine is the answer. Look at the square root of eighty-one, and that's nine. All right. So again, here we take care of that square. So that's really the square root of seven squared, because the negative squared is positive. 
and that's just going to be seven. Oops, I forgot to circle my answers. All right, so this one's not too bad. This one was blue. Again, remember those little two out here? So the square root of 25 is five. We look at the eight, we look at the little two. Two divides eight four times. It's perfect, no remainders. So y to the fourth is the answer. Evaluate these. It's okay to have an odd X, uh, index and be negative in the radicand. That's gonna be negative two. And looking at this one, the negative has to come over. The fourth root of 16 is also two because two to the fourth gives us 16. They're both negative two. Now for this one, you might wanna remember, That if you have the, I don't know, mth root of x to the n, that's just going to be x over x raised to the n over m power. So radicals and fractional exponents are the same thing. So basically, the denominator comes out front and the numerator stays inside. I probably could write that a little better. There we go. I don't like that three so big though. I don't want you to think it's a really big number. It's just that index up there. Now here's where it gets really exciting. 24 doesn't have a perfect square root. 19's not even. We know there's a two out here, right? You can split this up. Think of perfect squares in your head. Perfect squares are like what? The four, nine, etc. So when you look at that, the 16, the 25, look at 24, you see 4 times 6. When you look at the x to the 19th, you just want an even power. So you want x to the 18th times x to that first power. Because 18 plus 1 gives you the 19, right? 6 times 4. All right, so we know the square root of 4, that's 2. Take care of that one. Square root of 18, x to the 18, rather, is, again, we divide 2 into 18 x to the ninth, and then nothing else has perfect squares in them, so 6x is left inside the square root. All right, number 14. The trick to adding and subtracting, on the little remember over here, adding and subtracting radicals, Write the word out. Radicals. The radicand must match. All right. Oh, and well, the root must match. The root and radicand that's much. When you multiply them or divide, the root has to match. I remember radicands are usually irrational, unless they're perfect, like square root of four or something like that. So radicands and irrational numbers and rational numbers don't combine with each other, okay? We don't multiply things through or anything. So this square root of three kind of gives me a hint that maybe there's threes in each one of these. So when I look at 75, it's really 25 times three. When I look at 27, it's really nine times three. Well, 25 and nine are both perfect squares. So this becomes 14 square root three plus five square root of 25 is 5, square root 3, minus square root of 9 is 3, square root 3. Square roots, that's where those come from. 
Then all you have to do is clean it up a little bit. You got 14 square root 3 plus 25 square root 3 minus 3 square root 3. Now you got your matching radicands, index and root and radicand. Index is also the word for root. So all we have to do here is just add 14 and 25, make um, 39, subtract 3, you got 36 square roots of 3. So here, again, we want to look for perfect squares. And sometimes I do that good, and sometimes I don't. This one I can clearly see it's 4 times 3. Right square root of that. 48. I see a 4 in there, but it's 4 times 12, and there's another 4 in 12. So, down with that. Let's see, this is going to be, I'm going to use the time symbol. I don't like that. 2, 4 times 3, there's a dot. Square root of 48, I see 4 times 12, but 12 has a 4 in it also. So that's really the square root of 4 times 4 times 3 and 2 times 4 times 3. All right. Well, those two right there make 16, right? So you get the square root of 16, which is 4, square roots of 3 times 2 times the square root of that 4, which is 2 square roots of 3. And that's going to get you, this is 4, right? So then 4 times 4 is 16. And then you're going to have the square root of 3 times the square root of 3. Because they're both rational, irrational, you can multiply them together. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is square root of 9. So that gives you 16 times 3. So the square root of 9 is 3. And that gives you 48 as an answer. Now, what you could have done is you could have multiplied that 48 times 12 and got a really huge number. It came out pretty here, but unless your calculator does pretty print stuff, it's not going to give you a pretty answer. It's going to give you decimals and all kinds of grief in your calculator. That's the same idea with these. I recognize right off that 5 is not a perfect square, neither is 15. I see the Y is, but I got a Y here and a Y there. I got W here and a W there. So I'm just going to go ahead and multiply all these together and see what happens. Give myself a little more room. I always tell my students I can do these with very little paper, but when I'm teaching, I need a lot of paper. All right, so 5 times a 15 is 75. If you think of the 3 quarters of 75 cents, you already see you've got two 25s in there. I mean, you got a 25 in there and 3 times 3. All right, y to the seventh times y to the fourth. Same base, we add exponents. Seven and four is 11. W cubed times W squared, W to the fifth. Now we're gonna take that next little trick. Split this apart, we know it's a square root, so we want even exponents. So the first thing we want is 25 times three. And we want y to the 10th, y to the first, W to the fourth w to the first. All right, so that's going to give us, I'll come down here. Oh, wait. Square root of 25, that's a perfect square. Yeah, that's a perfect square. y to the 10th is a perfect square. y to the 4th is a perfect square. So we have 5, y to the 5th, w, no, yeah, to the 2. And left inside is the 3 y to the first, w to the first. Last but not least, one more radical. Notice they have different roots. If you remember, our rule was if you add and subtract them, they must have the same root. And if you're multiplying and dividing, they must have the same root. These don't. What do we do? Well, we go back to the other thing we learned. We turn it into a fractional exponent. So, remembering again, if there's just a, whoops, sorry about that. 
no exponent, there's a 1. So the first one is y to the 2 thirds. Oops. I'm going to write that bigger down here below so we have more room. Uh, hang on a second. Let me finish this. Let me finish this real quick. Y to the second. Y to the 2 thirds. Times y to the 1 fourth. All right, well, we got the same base, so we're going to add the exponents, right? So it's going to be y to the two thirds plus one fourth. That recalls our good friends back in the day of um, fractions and least common denominators, right? So that's going to be the least common denominator of 12, and that'll be an 8, and that'll be a 3. So our answer is y to the 11 twelfths. Whoops, no equal sign. y to the 11 twelfths. And it all depends on how Alex is feeling that day, whether it takes it like this or wants you to put it back into the square root uh, stuff. So I figure out how Alex is feeling. All right, well, that's all for homework one. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off the recording and stop presenting.